Okay, so here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to talk about the worst styles, but just before we get into the absolute worst, I wanna talk about one that I feel a little bit sorry for. There's certain styles out there that I think are amazing, both for the individual and for fashion as a whole, but there's others that I don't think are doing anyone any favors. So is your style one of the good ones or should it be thrown away into oblivion and forgotten about forever? Well, let's find out. Well, I say let's find out, but this is all just my opinion. So that's all we're really finding out. So we're gonna start off with the best styles first and then we'll do the worst ones later. But in no particular order, we've got the workwear style first. So if you're into the style, then you probably wear a lot of Carhartt and a lot of Dickies. And maybe a bit of engineered garments or universal works if you wanna show your more serious about the style. But the reason this style is one of the best out there, in my opinion of course, is because the clothing is designed for manual labor so it can take a beating. This style also looks good or maybe even better when the pieces have got a bit of wear to them. So yeah, the pieces last forever. Well, nothing lasts forever. Well, apart from love. And speaking of love, if you decide you love this video at any point and you wanna show it some love, then please feel free to drop it a like. Hopefully that was pretty smooth, but I highly doubt it. Anyway, the other great thing about the workwear style is it suits most people, no matter what body type they have. Also, the pieces are really versatile, so if you do decide you wanna switch up your style a bit, you can still easily incorporate your old workwear pieces into your new style. The pieces aren't overly expensive. Yes, they're not cheap either, but when you think about cost per wear and how long these pieces last, then you definitely get your money's worth. I also think the workwear style isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So yeah, it's a timeless style. So the next best style, in my opinion, is the Gorp Core style. Now the wearers of this style look like they're ready to climb Everest, but the only climbing they're gonna be doing is onto their bike to cycle into town to get themselves an oat milk latte and a nice pastry. And if the Gorp Core style is your kind of style, then let us know your favorite pastry. <laughs> Anyway, even though this style isn't really for me, I still think it deserves a place on this list as being one of the best styles out there. And the reason it deserves a place on this list is because of how useful and practical the clothing is. As this style is mainly made up of outdoor clothing, even if you get bored of the clothing, it's still gonna come in handy. Everybody needs a good raincoat, a good pair of walking shoes, or just outdoor clothes in general. So even if you don't wanna wear them as part of your everyday clothing, they're still gonna get some good use. The other great thing about outdoor clothing is it can withstand some of the harshest weather so it holds up well, so it should last you for years. So we've got the minimalist style next as one of the best styles out there. If you're a minimalist, then you could probably recite the full contents of your wardrobe off the top of your head in under a minute. And if you can't, then it's probably time you cleared out some clothes because it sounds like you might have too many. Is that also a bit of clutter I can see in the corner? I'm only joking. Now, even though a lot of people are bored of the minimal style, it's taught me some of the most valuable tips when it comes to fashion. And the main one being buy less, buy well. This is something that completely changed everything for me when it comes to shopping and not just with fashion either. But when it does come to fashion, the minimalist style taught me to focus on building a timeless wardrobe full of pieces that I absolutely love. I used to impulse buy things all the time and in the end, it was just a massive waste of money. I'd never wear those pieces and they just take up room in my house. Now these days, I'm consciously trying to buy even less and when you do actually buy something, it feels even more special because you put a lot of thought into that piece and it's something that you actually want. And as I'm buying less, I've got more money to spend on better quality pieces. So it's win-win really. Now we've got the thrifter next or the vintage style next. As we all know by now, buying second hand or third hand, fourth hand, all the hands, it's the most sustainable way of shopping. So that's why it's got a spot on this list. I think the only problem with people who are into the vintage style is they can't stop shopping. So their wardrobe is bursting at the seams. But this style definitely made buying secondhand more accepted by society. Back when I was a kid, people used to think that buying secondhand clothing was gross. But these days, secondhand clothing is a lot more desirable. And I think this shift in mindset and the way people shop was very much needed in fashion. And that's what makes this style one of the best. The other great thing about this is if you don't have much money to spend on clothing, then you don't need to go to fast fashion stores anymore. Just shop secondhand. You can get some really decent quality pieces for a great price. You could also get your hands on some really unique pieces and get a really unique look. Okay, so here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to talk about the worst styles, but just before we get into the absolute worst, I wanna talk about one that I feel a little bit sorry for, and that's the sneakerhead. I know what it's like to have a hobby turn into an 
addiction and it can start to take over your life. For example, I buy vinyl that never leaves its packaging. It just sits on a shelf, taking up room in the house. And I listen to the music on that record on Spotify instead. So why do I need the vinyl? Because I just need it, all right? And it's the same for sneakerheads, but they have it worse. Their shoes start to take over the house. Their spare bedroom is no longer a space for their guests to stay in. It's now a storage space for their shoes. Their main bedroom has also become a storage space and they're having to sleep between their boxes. And they don't have enough money for a bigger place because they spent it on their sneakers. And with the prices that sneakers are going for, they've had to start sacrificing hot meals for sneakers. But at least they've got a load of sneakers that they can choose from and get to wear, right? Wrong. They can't wear them. If they wear them, it makes the sneaker less desirable. So they just look at them. Well, if the going does get too tough, then they're sitting on a small fortune so they can just sell them, right? Wrong. A sneakerhead never wants to part from their beloved sneakers. Eventually, their partners decide they can't take it anymore and they decide to move out. But sadly, the sneakerhead doesn't even notice because they haven't seen their partner for weeks due to the amount of boxes they've got stacked up in their house. <laughs> Moving on. So one of the actual worst styles out there is called the Love Island style. Now, I don't think this is actually called the Love Island style, but I don't know what it's called. So if you do know what this style is called, do let us know in the comments. And if you don't know what Love Island is, and I wish I didn't, but it's a TV program where a load of people go onto an island to find love. It's in the name, really. Now, the style that you see on the show is normally made up of spray-on skinny jeans, a colorful t-shirt or shirt, and some chunky sneakers, normally Alexander McQueen's. Now, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you enjoy wearing, but that's not my main issue with the style. Now, apart from the sneakers, most of the outfits are made up of cheap, poorly made clothing from the likes of Boohoo, Shein, and Zara. And in my opinion, it doesn't get much worse than these stores. Now, actually, the last season of Love Island, and I promise I don't watch it, but uh, their sponsor was eBay, and they tried to push buying secondhand more. But to be honest with you, the wearers of this style that aren't on Love Island that aren't being sponsored by eBay, I don't think they shop secondhand. I also think the wearers of this style don't like to be seen in the same clothing twice, so they're constantly replacing their wardrobe. And because these pieces are so poorly made and cheap in the first place, then no one wants to buy them off you secondhand, so they just end up in the bin. So I think this style is fast fashion at its worst, and I don't think many good things have come out of it. The next style we've got is the hype beast style, and I know this changes all the time, but I'm talking about the trend hopper here. And I think we all know someone that fits into this category. Now, of course, we're all influenced influenced by trends to a certain degree, but this type of person will only wear what's currently trending. And as soon as the internet says something isn't cool, they don't want to be seen dead in that. Of course, this way of shopping does keep things exciting, and of course you'll always be on trend. But this way of shopping is not good for your wallet, and it's not good for the environment either. I also think it's a shame to stop wearing something you enjoy wearing just because it's not trending anymore. The next worst style is the 1920s Peaky Blinder style. Now, I loved watching Peaky Blinders when it first came out on TV, but as as the show got more and more popular, more and more people started to dress like the Peaky Blinders, so much so that they actually thought they were a real life member of the Peaky Blinders. These types would head into town on a Saturday night and after too much booze, they'd start fights with people, probably some poor gorpcore enthusiast who was minding their own business. Now, I actually think the 1920s style looked pretty good. Not the Baker Boy hats. I can't get behind those hats. Sorry if you wear one, but I can't stand them. But apart from the hats, I think the style looked pretty good. It was more the people that let this one down. And I couldn't even finish the last season of the Peaky Blinders because these guys ruined it for me. I just couldn't take it seriously anymore. The whole thing felt like a meme. And because these guys ruined a show that I was thoroughly enjoying, this style is going down as one of the worst for me. If you enjoy wearing your style and it makes you happy and it's causing nobody else any harm, then of course, carry on wearing it and just ignore me. But if you enjoyed this one, please do leave it a like. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you all next week. Thank you so much for watching everyone. See you later.